Hello everyone, I'm Dana Jean Antonelli, an etiquette consultant. If you're new to my channel, welcome. In this channel, I talk about manners, etiquette, anything that can help you become the best version of yourself through those practices. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm happy to have you back and to know that you've enjoyed my previous videos. Now for today's video, it's a really fun one. We will be going over wine etiquette. I will be talking about different types of wine, how to hold your glasses, food pairings, and so on and so forth. But I want to introduce you to my dear friend, Karen. Um, say hello. Hi guys, I'm really excited to be here because I love wine and Dana. <laughs> so let's get to it. Let's start off with the different types of wine. Here we have four, but there's technically five. So we have a sparkling wine, white wine, a red wine, a dessert wine, but I did forget to get a rosé wine, which I know is one of your favorites. That's fine, we can work with these. <laughs> so let's go over opening up a sparkling wine. Now I did want to mention sparkling wines are wines that are carbonated. They have bubbles. Usually sparkling wines, we drink them when we're celebrating something, a birthday or a toast. Now, I do want to mention, now this is a bottle of champagne, a Bélicard Simon. Champagne, you can't just call any sparkling wine champagne. Did you mm -hmm. know that? I did know that. And why is that? Because it needs to be from France. Correct. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, Champagne is technically a region in northern France where they make sparkling wine. So you can't call an Italian sparkling wine Champagne because it doesn't make sense. So let's open up this bottle of bubbly. You want to rip the foil open and under you will find the cork and a wire cage. Mm -hmm. So you want to unwind the wire cage, but you want to leave it on the cork. And now you don't want to shake it open because that can be dangerous. If the cork pops open, then you can hit someone or, you know, ruin your furniture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you before? Uh, no, I'm very careful. <laughs> <Thank God. laughs> Side note too, when you're opening a bottle, you want to make sure the label faces your company. So in this case, it's you. So you want to hold it open. You want to hold the bottom. <laughs> Why are you moving away? <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> so you want to hold the bottom firmly and you want to give it a little nudge. And you'll feel it kind of starting to pop open, but you want to make sure you control that. Here we go. I can feel it. <laughs> Almost, Almost there. there. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. Now, actually, that was a little louder than what I want. You don't want to give off that popping sound when you open a bottle of champagne. It's actually not proper etiquette. Really? Yeah. If you're at a restaurant, it just brings attention to you mm -hmm. from the other guest. Okay. And that's one thing that you certainly don't want to do. Now, when it comes to pouring champagne, you take your flute. Now, this is a common glass for sparkling wines. Do you know why? No, I don't. So a flute is made for sparkling wines because it's lean. So that way the bubbles in the wine, in the sparkling wine, will contain its flavors and the bubbly. Okay. When it's open, and we'll go over that, it almost makes the bubbles dissipate right away. Okay. And that's one thing we don't want from a sparkling wine because sparkling wines are made to enjoy with the bubbles. And it's cold. Exactly. Okay. Always chilled. I mean, ice cold chilled. So when you're pouring your champagne into your glass, you wanna tilt your glass to about a 45 degree angle and you pour it slowly. And you wanna pour it about three fourths of the way. Or if you're feeling generous, a little more than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. So this is a good pour. You don't want to pour it to the top because you're walking around, you're giving it to your guests. It will cause spillage. Mm -hmm. And that's also one of the reasons why we use a flute versus a coupe for sparkling wines, just to avoid spillage. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes. So cheers, everyone. Now let's talk about opening a bottle of 
white or red wine. And in this case, we'll do a bottle of white wine. I'm actually not great at opening, so I will have Karen. So that, here. that's why she invited me. <laughs> um, so, so usually you want to grab your your wine opener, and it comes with a blade, but this one doesn't have a blade. But you would use the blade to cut around the foil so that this part can come off first, and then you get to the cork. So then you want to grab your bottle, again, facing your guests, just like we did with the sparkling wine. And then you want to twist it right in the middle. Probably, I like to go a little far. There's been times where I take like half the cork out um, and then I have to do it again. So this is probably good. Then you want to attach to the side to get it lifted. So it's coming out now. Perfect. And Voila! It made the popping noise. I don't know, is that bad okay. etiquette? <laughs> well, okay. most of the time, you know, if you're at a restaurant, they will serve your wine opened already for you. Unless you order the bottle, then they have to open it in front of you. Exactly. May I just see the cork? So one thing to note is you want to make sure that the cork is intact. That just shows that the wine is perfect. There's no faults in it. Because oftentimes if the cork is, you know, not together, it's most likely like moldy or there's something wrong with the wine and you don't want bad wine. Is that why they have you try it at a restaurant first? Absolutely. They would give you like a small pour and then they, you know, some people smell it. And I actually used to make fun of people who would smell their wine. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm like... What? I, I do that. <laughs> yes, but now I absolutely know the reason why. I mean, I'm no wine aficionado whatsoever, so we're just here to teach you what we know. One thing you want to smell for with your wine, if it smells like a wet cardboard or like a wet dog, then that means that there's definitely something wrong with the wine. Absolutely 100% okay to return it because you want your wine to be fresh. Mm -hmm. You're paying for that wine and you want to enjoy your meal with it, right? Right. And I think the expression for that is corked. That means that your wine is corked. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. See, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> Karen actually used to bartend, right? I did, so. but I took a class on wine when I went Ooh. to Rome, but it was just one class, but I did learn a few things there. You know, they're really big on wine and, mm. and so am I. So I tried to implement that when <laughs> when I'm sampling wines yeah. and, and picking the right one to pair with food that, you know, is appropriate for it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So here we have a Chablis wine. Uh, this is from France. It's actually my favorite. Have you tried it before? No, I haven't. Well, let me pour you a glass. Thank you. <laughs> so you want to pour in the center. So it's the widest part of the bowl. Now this glass that we have is a universal wine glass. There are certainly glasses for white wines and red wines. We don't have a red wine glass, but typically it's wider than this. It's more open, so the aromas, the flavors are able to breathe. Mm -hmm. Wanna try it? Sure, thank you. <laughs> and we hold it at the base, right? So you actually, let me show you. So you want to hold your wine glass or any glasses really with a stem. You want to take your middle index and thumb finger. So you want to pinch it at the very bottom and then you're using your middle finger to support it like so. Practice makes perfect. You can certainly do it in the middle or even at the very bottom of the bowl. Now, do you know why we don't really want to touch the wine glass by its bowl? Because our bodies, they're warm and exactly. they'll make the wine warm. And exactly. you want it cold. And you don't want chilled wine to be warm, yeah. <laughs> right? That's one thing. And also fingerprints, right? It's just not elegant. So this is the proper way to hold a wine glass. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> now, I love Chablis. It's very light. It's refreshing. It's minerally and it's very crisp. Oh, it's so What'd good. What'd you say? Yeah. It's really good. Mm -hmm. What do you know about food pairings with a white wine? So I know it varies, but I know that you choose white wine for white meats like chicken or, or fish. But I know that you are able to pair it with some steaks, but if you're going by just in general, mm -hmm. then you would associate white wine with white meats and then red wine with red, red meats. meats. Exactly. <laughs> 
Okay, that's perfect. When you go out to eat at restaurants, more oftentimes than not, they'll have a sommelier, which are mm -hmm. wine waiters or waitresses. They're there to specifically help you as far as recommendations if you're unsure of what wine to pair with whatever meal you have. So mm -hmm. it's always good to take advantage of that. You know, wine in general is just such a big subject, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many wines for, mm -hmm. from so many different areas. It's just so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Like I still get overwhelmed every yeah. time, you know, I want a glass of wine yeah. to pair with so-and-so. So just make sure to always take advantage of the sommeliers that are available to you. So for red wine, you typically want to drink them room temperature or even a little bit chilled. If you're having guests over, you want to pop it in the fridge for about 30 minutes before your guest arrives and then just take it out once they're here. <laughs> I got it. There. Thanks. <laughs> now, I personally am not huge red wine person. It's just too bold for me. Definitely tried it with steaks and they're amazing with steaks. Mm -hmm. Try food pairings when you can. It's just something that I've been getting into myself lately. Yep. It really complements the flavors of both the wine and your food. Now let's talk about pouring it. Same thing. Like I said, red wines usually are served in a wider bowl, but this is a universal glass that is okay for both red and white wine. So again, you just wanna pour it in the middle. You wanna pour a quarter, and that way it gives your wine the space to breathe. The cheek. I was just gonna say that, so it can breathe. Yes, yeah. exactly. And you know, you'll have space to twirl it and sniff it, and you want... <laughs> it's, what does it smell like? Definitely grapey. Yeah. It's more than okay to definitely stick your nose in there and sniff your wine. And this wine smells fresh. We've seen the cork. There's no fault in it. So this is a Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. and I think Pinot Noir is not as strong as like a Cabernet. Right. So I really like Pinot Noir after a long day. You know, it relaxes you, and yeah. this is something you can enjoy at home and just unwind from the day. So I personally am a big fan of Pinot Noir. There you have it. <laughs> So this one is a dessert wine, oftentimes served after your meal, of course, for dessert. But actually, let's go back to wine pairings. Have you ever tried sweet wine with cheese? No, I haven't actually. So that's one of the things that you want to think about. First, complementary. So sweet with salty, perfect. Mm -hmm. And then the intensity of the flavors. You want to make sure it's balanced. That's why Red wine goes perfect with steak. White wine goes perfect with seafood, fried seafood or French fries because of the acidity. Mm -hmm. So those are two things that you can think about when you are pairing your wine with your food. That's awesome. And I love dessert wine. Yeah. I think it just wraps everything up and, you know, everybody wants something sweet after dinner. Exactly. And then you're ready for bed. Yeah. <laughs> So here's another thing to keep in mind when you're drinking wine. This goes for anyone who wears a lipstick, right? We're going on a night out, mm -hmm. nice dinner. So we have a lipstick on. When you are drinking, right, you take a sip. And oftentimes you'll leave a lipstick stain. Mm -hmm. So I want you to always remember when you're taking your other sips to finish off your wine, Make sure you are sipping from that same spot to avoid lipstick stains all over your rim. We don't wanna do that. So just keep it clean and elegant and just be conscious that you are sipping from that same Where it is. Oh, lipstick, here it is. <laughs> lipstick stain spot. One last thing to keep in mind when you are at someone's home, for instance, for the dinner party, more often times than not, they'll probably be using their best glass. So when you're doing a toast, you don't want to clink because mm -hmm. what if it breaks, right? It's their special glass for that special occasion. So you just want to raise your glass, make eye contact, cheers, and have a sip. <laughs> And on that note, that concludes our wine etiquette video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Very basic, but hopefully it helps you become better at ordering wine at a restaurant or food pairings. Karen, let us know quickly about you before we go. So my name is Karen. I'm a real estate agent here in Boston. I am part of the RRNA team with Coldwell Banker. We have a lot of new construction projects right now. We are actually standing in one right now in East Boston. So make sure to follow us on Instagram at RRA Boston to see more of those. Perfect. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you on my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.